Are you entitled to privacy in the 21st century? Should it be a human right? Or are we doomed to live in Orwellian dystopia forever? With our lives becoming ever more digital, we must ask ourselves what implications the ever-shrinking boundaries of the all-seeing governments and corporations are having on our society and ourselves as individuals. There is no doubt about the fact that we are being surveilled on. Now, if this is a good or a bad thing, has a lot to do with your opinion on the subject matter. In simple terms, if you have nothing to hide, then why should you be worried, right? If all-encompassing surveillance can guarantee our own safety, that of our loved ones, and of our values, isn't it something inherently good? But well, if this was the case, then why don't we just share all our intimate secrets with any stranger we meet on the open road? Why don't we parade around the innermost depths of our psyche for the whole world to see? Edward Snowden, the famous CIA and NSA contractor who leaked classified information back in 2013 that brought to light concerning revelations on the extent of which various surveillance programs were being conducted by our trusted governments, famously once said, arguing that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. Yet, when it comes to free speech, we almost agree in unison that it is a fundamental human right we need to protect. Privacy, on the other hand, hasn't gotten this special treatment. We have gone through scandal here and there, data leak after data leak, but with the passage of time, it's as if we have all accepted that it's something we must leave in the past. The problem with privacy is that it's a double-edged sword. Predictive policing, for example, is a quickly expanding industry that empowers law enforcement to prevent crime before it happens. Through sophisticated analysis of various signals that point to possible violations of the law, we can predict where and how bad actors will wreak mayhem. While the technology is in its infancy, and nowhere near the maturity we see, for example, in Minority Report, a movie that dabbles with the ideas of pre-crime, free will, and determinism, it can only become better and more precise through the access to more data. Are we willing to sacrifice our privacy for better security? Should we? It is important to find a way to give access to the entities that protect us without violating our liberties. How to do so is a very good question and one that we should definitely figure out. When we meet someone new, we do not share everything, not even close. So why should it be okay to do so with our own governments? It is a lot easier to ignore the breaches of our privacy when it isn't with the ones we know. But can we trust these people? Can we trust that they are keeping our data safe? Privacy isn't only a question of fear of judgment. It prevents reputational damage. It mitigates emotional distress. It diminishes identity theft, fraud, intimidation, discrimination, even physical harm. As humans, we were never designed to be able to cope with everyone everywhere. Dunbar's number, a well-known concept in the field of social anthropology and sociology states that we can only comfortably maintain relationships with 150 people. Any more than that, and it leads to the breakdown of social interactions. When data privacy is breached, it leads to the proliferation of potentially harmful and overwhelming interactions. This is especially true on social media, where excessive oversharing has become normality. People are more connected than ever, yet lonelier and more depressed than they have ever been. We need to ensure our privacy to keep our dignity, trust, and intimacy. The most detrimental consequence of the lack of privacy, though, has to be the systematic destruction of our autonomy. The average human being sees between 4,000 to 10,000 ads in a single day. From billboards to newspapers, posters, media outlets, and just the people around us, plastered in designer clothes, using products only from the most prestigious of brands, parading each logo as if they were ambassadors of their sales. And the worst is that we idolize this hedonistic behavior. And to top it off, this is only the tip of the iceberg. The ads, and in comparison we could call civil, and unintrusive. It's the ones that we see on our feeds, the ones that we see in marketing emails, the ones that are specifically chosen and fabricated to take advantage of our most personal primal instincts. Of the thousand of ads we see every day, we only recognize around a hundred, and it takes you an average of seven times to actively recognize the same one. So when you buy something, which in almost every case will be something you do not need, because we actually only need shelter, food and water, safety, love, and belonging, 
self-esteem, and self-actualization, how do you know that it was your conscious choice to do so? How do you know that what you want is what you really want? Are we even mentally capable to do so? Otto Schopenhauer, a German philosopher from the 19th century once said, man can do what he wills, but he cannot will what he wills. And keep in mind, he said this before the age of predatory and individualized advertisements. Because this goes far beyond just the products that you buy. It's the movements you become a part of, the causes you follow, the things you believe in, and the way you choose to spend your time. We are surrounded by distractions, influenced by trends, so deep down in the rabbit hole we do not know how to distinguish anything anymore. This is why we need privacy. We need the freedom and space to reflect on ourselves, to find who we truly are, and we cannot do that if we are constantly under a magnifying glass, an all-seeing eye that controls our desires. It's abundantly clear that we should take privacy more seriously, that we should stand up for our rights. We should hold the keepers of our data more accountable and gain more control over our own data, our data. With the emergence of artificial intelligence, we are facing new opportunities that could allow us to benefit from the best of both worlds. With technologies like federated learning that enable multiple actors to build a common, robust machine learning model without ever sharing data, we could have intelligent systems that watch over all of us, warn us about the evils in the world while preserving our privacy and dignity. When we move past NFTs and crypto scams, we could start using blockchain to implement self-sovereign identity, which would put us back in control of our personal data, with no centralized entity in control, proving our identity without ever providing any more data than we want to, while not relying on the current mega-conglomerate single sign-on solutions. I believe that in the face of adversity, we must look ahead and use the means to our disposal our great technology for the good of humanity. Anyway, thanks for listening, for your time. And what do you think? What is the outlook for us concerning privacy?